he just going to read out the Bible uh, from the Gospel of John chapter 10. Uh, this is the last day of the festival of lights according to the word of God, according to the Bible. The Jewish Messiah would come and fulfill the biblical feasts, the biblical festivals. So I'm just going to read John 10 out for you as this is the last day. Uh, Jesus is speaking, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out and when he puts forth his own sh uh, sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice and the stranger will they not follow but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers this parable speak Jesus unto them but they understood not what things they were which he talks to them about. Then said Jesus unto them again, um, Truly I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, and all that ever came in before, and all, sorry, that came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me if any man enters in, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. The wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and he cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine. As the Father knows me, even so I the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it up again. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received from my Father. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings, which Jesus said. And many of them said, He has a devil and is mad. Why hear him at all? Others said, These are not the words of him that has a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem the feast of dedication, and it was winter time. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you have believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. 
but ye believe not because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave me them, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones against him, to stone him. Now, stoning doesn't mean the same as it means today, getting stoned, but anyhow. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father, for which those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, It is not written in your law, I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, see ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blaspheme, because I said, I am the Son of God. Woo, woo. Okay. Please go back. As the place of God. All right, God bless you. It's a feast of lights today, so Jesus fulfilled that festival. Uh, but if I do not, uh, but if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know, and believe that the Father is in me, and I in Him. Therefore, they sought again to take Him, but He escaped out of their hands and went away again beyond the Jordan into the place where John at first baptized and there he abode. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on Jesus there. And so this is Jesus um, speaking during the, the Feast of Dedication, the Feast of Lights, which just ends this week. And the Bible says, and Jesus himself says, I have come to fulfill the commandments of God that were given to the Jewish people, and they speak about the Ark Messiah and also the Gentile Messiah. And Jesus says he wants to make them one sheepfold under the Good Shepherd, under the Messiah of Israel. Hallelujah. So you may wonder why we do not observe these festivals, which are from the Bible. You have to look at history about that. But I'm just going to explain what the Bible talks about, uh, the festivals that we in the West worship, Christ Mass, Ishtar, which are spoken of in Jeremiah 10. So John 10 speaks about Jesus fulfilling the Bible, one of the biblical festivals. And Jeremiah 10 speaks of the pagan festivals which do not speak of the, the Jewish Messiah or the Messiah of Israel or the whole world. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaks unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For their customs of the people are vain, for one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with an axe. They deck it with silver and gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers that move not. Now remember this verse was written several thousand years ago, probably about 600 to 1000 years before Christ's birth. And this is very much speaking about the festival of Mithras cutting a tree out of the forest, decorating it with gold and silver. It's a pagan festival. 
it continues, they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must uh, needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also at them to do good. For as there is no one like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee, O King of nations? For to thee does it appertain, for as much as among all the wise men of the nations, and in all their kingdoms, there is none like unto thee. But they are altogether brutish and foolish, the stock of a doctrine of vanities. Silver spread into plates is brought from Tarshish, and gold from Uphaz. The work of the workmen of the hands of the founder, blue and purple as their clothing. They are all the work of cunning men. But the Lord is true. God is he, the living God, an everlasting king. His wrath, the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. Thus shall ye say unto them, The gods have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He hath made the earth by his power, he has established the world by his wisdom, and has stretched out the heavens by his dire discretion. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapours to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings with the rain and brings forth the wind out of the treasures. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molten image is falsehood and there is no breath in them. They are vanity and the works of errors. In the time of their visitation they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance, the Lord of hosts is his name. Gather up thy wails out of the land, O inhabitants of the fortress. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will sling out the inhabitants of the land. At this once, and will distress them, that they may find it so. Woe is me for my hurt, my wound is grievous, but I said, Truly, there is a grief, I must bear it. My tabernacle is spoiled, which means house, and all my cords are broken. My children are gone forth of me. They are not there eh, to stretch my tent anymore, to set up my curtains. For the pastors have become brutish, and have not sought the Lord. Therefore shall not prosper, and all their flock shall be scattered. Behold, the noise of the brute is come, and a great commotion out of the north country to make the city of Judah desolate and a den of dragons. O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in a man that walks to direct his steps. O Lord, correct me, but with the judgment, not in anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. Pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know thee not, and upon the families that call not on thy name, for they have eaten up Jacob, and devoured him, and consumed him, and have made his habitation desolate. So as from Jeremiah chapter 10, and it's speaking about the pagan festivals of the nations, again where they cut down a tree from the forest, decorated with gold and silver, it has no meaning. In fact, um, you know, the Illuminati symbol is a pyramid, and the fir tree is very much like a pyramid. And in occultism, they have the all-seeing eye at the top. And on the Christmas tree, they put the star at the top as well. So it's nothing to do with the true Messiah. It's perhaps anti-Messiah in nature. And so just realize again that Jesus, or Yeshua, came to fulfill the biblical festivals, the Jewish festivals. 
He was the Passover lamb who died for our sin during Passover. He poured out his Holy Spirit during Pentecost and was born during the Feast of Booths. And so these things are what the Bible teaches. And so the Bible does talk about fearing the Lord. The Bible does speak about repenting of our sin. And uh, whatever that sin is, God can pour out his spirit upon you, give you eternal life, give you understanding of who he is, of his word. And so, it's the reason I came out tonight. And so that's my hope to you. That is part of the gospel. If you read Romans chapter 11, it says that God part blinded the Jews. It means that even though the Jewish people were given the festivals of God or the oracles of God, many of them couldn't really relate that to the Messiah. They couldn't relate that to the fact that the Messiah had to die for their sin. They couldn't really relate that to the Messiah being one with God, being God's son, being the light of the world, as Jesus says. And this is the Feast of Lights this week. just ends tomorrow. So this is the holiday season for me. Back to work tomorrow for me. So hope you've enjoyed this reading. May God bless you.